Welcome back to my vlog series where I take you along with me on my jobs and learn with me along the way. In this video, I'll replace a few old anti-siphon valves, then show you how to find and repair a pipe break under lawns and shrubs. You may learn things here that you wouldn't otherwise learn anywhere else, so come along for the ride. Before we get to the pipe breaks, I'll show you some old valves and what I replaced them with. The Aerotrol 2711 APR anti-siphon valves that are available today were originally Richdale 711 APRs. The original color was black, then it went to these two colors. Today it is this same gray color. The Richdale and Aerotrol names are the professional grade versions of these same valves that you find at hardware stores under the names Rainjet, Lawn Genie, and Toro, even though these are lesser grade valves. Most of the parts are interchangeable. It's pretty cool and unique that this valve manifold represents all four generations. You can see here why we're replacing these sprinkler valves. These solenoids are blown out. They get water inside of them and then they start rusting from inside and then they end up blown out like this as compared to this Aerotrol valve that's newer and the solenoid has not blown out yet. So technically we don't really need to replace the entire valve. We could just replace the solenoids but the uh, gardener had convinced the owner to just replace the entire valves. The wire connectors used here were popular back when these valves were installed, but they're pretty obsolete now. Most folks are using these watertight wire nuts that have gel in them. Water seeping out of here. So I've got my drip tubing with electrical tape on the bottom. To displace that water. Oof, cookie. So I cut those off. As you can see, two of them I cut off just below the male adapters. But the three quarter inch valve, I had to cut some length off because of that coupler that's in the way. If I would have cut it above that coupler, there wouldn't have been enough room to glue the new male adapter on. So I had to cut it below it and then created three and a half inch extensions to bring this up about even with these. So I put these on first since I just cut them right below the original male adapters. And then this way, I, by putting these on first, now I know the height that I need for this one. And these don't have to be, you know, exact, especially in the situation when they were different heights to begin with. I try to get them as close as I can. On new installations, it's easy because you're putting them all the same height. But anyway, I put the couplers on down there and then I put this here and then measured what my distance, my, what my length needed to be, and it was three and a half inches. So I'm leaving the solenoid off so the gases from the glue can escape, and we'll give it about 20 minutes. In the meantime, I'm going to start digging up that lawn right there because there's a break in the pipe under there from this valve here. So I'm doing it in this order on purpose so that I can do this while this is drying. It's making good use of my time. Once the glue's dried, <clears throat> I'll put the solenoids on and turn the water back on and test it. If everything's happy, then I'll wire it up. Let's see, I've marked all the wires. I cut just below the male adapters using this saw. Uh... 
before I mark the wires and cut the wires and cut the valves off, I started the documentation. And so I remember what order the valves are when I put it back together. I don't know exactly where the brake is in here. I just saw water coming up, pooling up here, and so I'm just cutting out a section that I can easily lift out with the shovel, and then I'll dig down until I find, hopefully find pipe, clear that out, and then once I can turn the sprinkler valve back on, then I'll turn it on and see where water's coming from. It might be shooting from this direction or that direction, who knows. But I'm guessing at this point that it's the pipe that goes with that pop-up that's in the corner. It probably goes down along this way to the next one and it may be broken there. And I'm sure we're gonna be dealing with plenty of tree roots because we've got a huge liquid amber here. Back east, you guys call them sweet gums. You can see here how the liquid amber tree roots goes right in line. That is lifting up this walkway there and here, so we know we've got a root in here. And it may be a tree root that broke the pipe. Well, I've got a hole dug. Typical layer of roots directly under the sod. There's a great big root right there. So, I don't know. I'm going to go turn the water on now. And then I'll turn that valve on. Then I'll go turn the sprinkler valve on come over here and see what direction the water's coming from. There we go, it's coming from that direction. So I'm going to start here because the water is coming, definitely coming from that direction. So I'm going to dig this out and turn the water on again and see if it's coming from that direction. Well, this part of the job called investigation and discovery, you never know what you're going to find. So I dug this down and found the pipe there and so I'm just gonna go ahead and take this section out and we may find a break right right here since the water's coming from that direction I set these pieces of sod down just the way I got them out of the ground in the same order so that it makes it easier to put everything back together correctly Well, there's the pipe, <laughs> open-ended right there. I have no idea what the story is with that. I'm going to dig some more right here and see if I can find the other end of that pipe, but at the moment it's a mystery. Well, I found it, but that pipe right there is super loose over here. This here is connected to that pop-up right there. You can see when I do that how the pop-up turns. So this is the end of the line for this section. So I'm just going to put this back together here, let it dry, turn it on, and see if we have any issues over here. I used the spray nozzle here to just gently get that mud off of the pipe to make it easier to work with. Just enough to clean it off. didn't want to put a bunch of water back in the hole. And if I cut this off right here, 
that elbow is going to be right there and see it won't match so I'm gonna have to cut this off back here and add a piece of pipe and get this the right length I also rinsed out the inside of the pipes because they were full of mud using the water pressure so while the glue is drying on this I'll go wire up the valves Okay, you're going to turn it on and see how things are. Oh. Well, there's another problem. So what I found, I may have broken, and the real problem is under this hedge. That's part of the job. Pipes can feel like roots under the shovel blade and break easy if they are thin wall pipe like class 120 or 200 like this pipe was. When I put all this back in, I like putting the rooty stuff in first, that way the soil below the sod is soft and it makes it more pliable for uh, grading it properly. I'll come back next week and take that dead boxwood out and hopefully it's just under that one so I don't have to dig up that one. Okay, I've dug out that boxwood that needs to stay out anyway it's not gonna come back and look any better it needs to be just be replaced this tubing came out of that connection down there obviously it was a T down there and I cut it here to get it out of my way but you can see that there's also a one inch pipe down there that goes under this hedge which is in my opinion a no-no especially since it's a thin wall pipe I can tell by the way it flexes number one I would use schedule 40 I use schedule 40 everywhere I don't use thin wall pipe but the roots can break that easily and then in digging this tubing see it's going this way and I dug this out to see where it goes and at 90s down there at that downspout and back there I can tell you it's gonna be solid roots back there I don't know where it ties in to the piping but the valves are right here it ties into that valve somehow but we're not here to deal with all that my main point is to get this fixed because of all that water that's coming into this area so I don't know if it's the pipe or the tubing, but we're going to guess at this point that it's the tubing. And having that tubing under there, under the plants as well, is a huge, huge no-no. Man, never do that. The drip tubing should stay above grade for one thing. This was all buried. I dug this out. And you can see all the roots in there. But that should never be buried. And it should never go under plants like that because the plants will squeeze off that tubing. That's just terrible installation practice. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to take this out. Um, I'm just going to slip it out here and then I'm going to crimp it and turn that line on and see if the water flows through that pipe. See if we have any cracks in the pipe. Uh, again, not knowing where the water was coming from. We'll see if I've isolated the problem. Hopefully it's just this connection here. And if that's the case, then I'll redo this situation. Really, this boxwood hedge really doesn't need drip tubing on it. Um, if the lawn sprinklers are installed in here correctly, then these roots, I guarantee you, these roots from these boxwoods are under the lawn and they're getting plenty of water from the lawn. But whatever, I see tubing going over there.
Let's see where it goes. <clears throat> Another 90. You don't need 90s. Every fitting is a potential point of failure, and 90s are awful. I rarely ever use 90s because, well, you can see here. See how that's not coming out of the fitting? The tubing is not coming out of the fitting straight. And it's possible that that's leaking right there because of it. And that's, 90s are notorious for that. So I rarely ever use 90s. All you have to do is just make a sweep with the tubing. And so that comes back around another 90 here, right here, and then it goes down. So I don't know where it ends up. But you can see it's going down into the ground. So it may be that it ties in directly under here. But at the moment, it's not a what we're after. So I'm just going to leave that alone for now. All right. So I'm going to crimp this and turn the water on and see if we have any water coming out here anymore. Okay. I couldn't get that pulled all the way through, so I just cut it. But I've got it crimped here. I've got it crimped here. So let's turn the water on and see what happens. Here, your water. Yeah, it's under here. Okay, before I dig that hole, I didn't want all that water that had accumulated in here. It just filled with water. I wanted to get it out because I didn't want it invading that space. Used my handy Carl's Jr. cup. Back east, you're going to know it as a Hardee's. And in the Midwest. I keep this big gulp size, extra large I guess you'd call it. And then this size, and then a smaller one here. Doesn't matter where these are from, I'm just uh, doing this just for the fun of it. This is from Fetty's when I was, uh, probably when I was in St. George, Utah, where my dad lives. But if I need something smaller than that, then I have these cups that I double in here. This one holds my Teflon tape. And this is a half by six cut off that I've already cut part of it off, but it's still usable. But I just store it here until I need it. Anyway, I've got these two cups. This one has screens, Rainbird pop-up screens, uh, Hunter, and uh, I usually have a Toro in there too. I don't know if I have one in there right now. And then my Hunter key and my MP rotator adjustment tool stays in that one. It's possible what we're dealing with here is the connection underneath this pop-up so we'll see we're gonna hope that's what it is not a broken pipe under the concrete okay so I when I got this dug out enough down there I felt this pop-up wiggled it back and forth a little bit and felt that it was busted right here so I cleared the mud out some more and you can see the curvature down there where it was where the pop-up was I could feel that there's a swing arm down there so apparently I'm guessing it's on this pipe here so there's gonna be a T probably a T right here so I'm gonna dig this out some more there's some honking roots here to deal with but um, I'm going to dig all that out and 
find that swing arm because I'm going to have to deal with that swing arm. Hopefully uh, swing it up and then I'm just going to put a 4-inch uh, pop-up on there instead. We don't need that 12-inch pop-up that was on there. It's just for this flower bed right here. This here was busted off right here at this T. And at that end is what went into that 12 inch pop up down below. So now that this is busted off here, that means I'm going to have to cut, dig all this out. This is all roots right here. I'm going to have to cut this out and I'm going to have to cut that T off and redo this assembly right here. It's another reason why you don't want to use thin wall pipe because that just snapped off whenever it snapped off. Um, if that was schedule 40 down there, it probably would not have broken. That's what I just chopped out. And you can see how the drip tubing got swallowed by the roots and pinched off down there. Okay, I have it dug out technically. But I'm going to dig this out some more so that when I cut this tee off, um, I'll have some uh, flexibility in this pipe here. And we have rain on the way. Hopefully I can get this done before it hits. I'm going to use this to rinse off that pipe since I have this handy. I'm only, only going to use just enough water to clean it off because I don't want to make a watery, muddy mess in the hole. These handy baskets you can get at home centers, hardware stores. I got this at Home Depot for a couple bucks. Eventually it'll crack, but this is a pretty good material. It's lasted a long time. But I'm going to Here's my T situation. I've got a bushing. That's a one by half inch slip thread bushing. That'll get glued on. That'll get glued on there. The swing arm will get uh, screwed into that probably with another Marlex on it right there. I'll use this coupler here to extend this because when I cut that off it won't be long enough to reach the, the new T and piece of one inch schedule 40 pipe that I'll use there. The pop-up I'm going to use is a PRS 30 and I'm going to use a five quarter Rainbird nozzle with the proper screen. Okay, I've got it cut off, clean. Next I'll put the primer on it. Uh, I'm gonna have to do some measuring and stuff to get all this set up correctly. Sometimes you can make this stuff work with minimal effort but this one here I can see that once this T gets on this is this pipe here is going to be too much at, a, at an angle to try to bend over see the angle that it's at it will not fit into that T properly so and if I put that on there then as you can see then the T won't go on there. Anyway, I'm going to have to lengthen this one. I'm going to have to cut this and lengthen it as well. So I'm going to have to go get another coupler. And dig this out more. Okay, I got this on here. I pushed this straight so it's perpendicular with this pipe. 
and I got a six and a half inch measurement after I put the coupler on. I glued the coupler on first, then I measured with the measuring tape, butted up at the seam inside where it stops. And then I got six and a half inches out of it. So I've got that on. The next step was to take this piece of pipe that I already had as a um, scrap on my truck, glued the coupler on and the T, and now I'm just going to place it on here. I've got this sitting here when I'm bringing the dauber across. I'm not dripping it on here. So I've got this placed on here so I can get my measurement here. So I'm pulling this a little bit like it's going to be. And you can see that that Sharpie mark that I put there lines up with the seam on here. So that's where I'll cut this pipe. Okay, I've got my assembly all together. I've got my bushing in there. I put my extra Marlex on there so we have more flexibility there so we can get the pop-up at the height and the angle that we want it. So all I have to do is just glue that on. I found that that swing arm was actually too long for this situation. It was not fitting in there. So I just put these three Marlex here to create a, a U-joint type swivel here since this is a kind of a traffic area here. Somebody could come across here and um, hit that pop-up. So this way it'll flex instead of snapping off like that one did. And this will just, I'm going to use this cut off here, that close nipple, off of this that was in there. And put that under the pop-up. Next, I'll turn it on and make sure there's no leaks anywhere. When I put this together, I put the assembly on there first because this has the most flexibility. I, I can move it like this, and that way I can pull it up, pull it back, and then shove it onto this pipe. So whichever pipe has the most flexibility. That's the one you usually want to put it on first. Okay, I don't hear anything. It's good. I coupled the drip tubing together here and here. Ran it under there under the board and found that it operates off of this three-quarter inch valve here. It's the only three-quarter inch valve on the manifold. So it kind of gives you a clue as to which valve it is. Remember the free downloads that can help you with your irrigation. Also remember the resources site link below that has most of the products for sale that I've discussed in these videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.